Hi, Alexa. Uh, I wanted to start and kind of give you some idea of what you're talking about or what you should be doing with uh, these exponential functions. You should have this piece of paper here. I know I gave it to at one point, but that doesn't mean you haven't misplaced it between before spring break and now. So if you don't have a copy of this, make sure you're asking for one. I'll get you another copy uh, electronically, but another copy. So this is on exponential growth and decay. This is the first question. This is well, number two. First question, uh, number two. And um, it says Tom opens a bank account, puts $500 in the bank account, and uh, he gets an annual rate of 6% on his investment. And he's going to do that for 15 years. He's not going to touch it for 15 years. Without giving you a lot of instruction, we're going to use this annual formula here. P is the principal. That's how much you invested. That's how much you borrowed. Uh, so that's that's the five hundred dollars that Tom put in the bank. R is the rate, and that's um, I think it was six percent in this problem. We have to change the rate to a decimal. So rates do have to be a decimal. So six percent would be zero point zero six. T is time. Time is in years. So I'm gonna pull up my camera here, and I'm hoping that it'll stay in focus for us. So we've got a $500 investment. I'm gonna put one plus 6% was the rate, 0 0.06. Basically this one is saying we get our $500 back, plus we get this extra interest money to the power of 15. Now I'm gonna guess you don't have um, a nice blue calculator like I have at school. So one site that I can recommend is called desmos.com, D-E-S-M-O-S.com. We're not gonna grab this as a graphing calculator. Use a calculator here. Okay, so here's a calculator. Looks a lot like the one that I had. Um, and it was 500 plus parentheses one. Nope, I put plus. I'm sorry. Let's delete that. Times uh, one plus 0 0.06 parentheses. This button right here means to the power of on this calculator. So to the power of. 15 years, and here's our answer, $1,198.27. And I believe you had that answer. So that is the correct answer, but I wanna make sure I explain why that's the correct answer. I'm gonna come back to number three and number four, look at number five. So if Genie invests $7,250 at a 12% rate, compounded weekly, find value after 10 years, so I'm gonna find the formula that says weekly. Similar formula, the difference now is instead of just the rate and the time, it's divided by 52. And that's because there's 52 weeks in a year. And that's where that 52 is coming from here. There's 52 weeks in a year. So the only thing that changes with monthly, weekly, daily is how often we take that interest. 12 months in a year, 52 weeks in a year, 365 days in a year. So if I fill in that formula, let me go back here. Uh, it was 7250. Okay. 7250 at 12% interest compounded every week. So over 52 to the power of 52 times time and time was 10. So principal, how much we borrowed or invested, the rate written as a decimal, 12%, 0 0.12, 52 for the 52 weeks in a year, 10 years. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to that calculator, double check that I got the right numbers in this. Yep, those are the right numbers. So I'm gonna go back to the calculator. I'm gonna type that in, so I'm gonna clear this out. And I've got 
250 times one plus, I'm actually using my keyboard to type this because I'm lazy. Two, look at that, it even makes a fraction. That's wonderful. Uh, I'm gonna go to the power of right here. And I'm gonna put an extra set of parentheses. You'll notice that that shows up here in my, in my problem. It also shows up here. If you don't put those parentheses in that exponent, you will get the wrong answer. You're telling the calculator to do something different. And so we need to make sure that we put those parentheses where there are parentheses. That way you can get the right answer. And there we go. There's the answer, $24,037. That's how much you would have left. Going back in here, number four. This one says Connor borrowed $8,000 at 90% interest rate, seven years. So there's all the information we need. If the interest is compounded continuously, what that means is instead of compounding every day or every minute or every second, it's smaller than that. It's every nanosecond, every just instant interest. You're constantly getting interest. Every, I mean, you can't even break it down small enough. We don't even know a word for how fast this is happening. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna fill in my blanks here. I can maybe keep it open at the same time. Here we go. Uh, the principal was $8,000. That's how much they borrowed, 19%. Oh, I'm sorry. Huh. I am not using the correct formula, and there goes my camera. Shoot. Let's see if I can get it back. Just wait. Just wait. Sorry, that was my daughter. Um, here we go. Okay. Um, we're going to use continuous interest. So here's the continuous formula. E is a number in this case. My oldest daughter. Uh, I was 10, hates it when I tell her that E is a number. Um, she constantly tells me that, no, E is a letter. In this case, E is a number, kind of like pi. Pi is a number. So we've got E, I'm going to go back to my camera here then, to the rate times time. So this looks different, but this is what happens when we have continuous interest. So rate times time is right there. So we've got $8,000 E to the power of and the rate was 19%. So we're going to put 0 0.19. I realize you can't see now. We go 0 0.19 times seven. So again, continuous rate, $1,000 investment times E to the power of 19% as a decimal times time. Well, I gotta look up. Thanks. Okay, uh, going back in here then. 8,000 times you can tell I use this calculator a lot. Here we go. Here's E, so under function. And I have to do this right now. E to the 0 0.19 times the time, which was seven years. And there's the answer. So that's continuous interest. That's where that formula comes from. So when things are happening continuously, like birth rates, people don't wait till the end of the month to have a baby. They just have a baby. Uh, death rates, which is a little bit more morbid, but when people are dying, they don't wait till the end of the month, the end of the week, the end of the day. They just die when they need to die which is sad, but um, bacteria, it grows. It's just, it's constantly growing. It doesn't wait. It doesn't you know, wait till the end of whatever uh, to grow. That's number three. I think this is where I need to get, uh, we've got, uh, what is the initial number of bacteria? This is different. So the question is we've got bacteria, 85% an hour growth, so it's growing. Uh, in two hours, we've got 12,500 bacteria in the culture. This is one thing you have to be really careful of. This is going to show up in a, a quiz question as well. It says, what is the initial number of bacteria in the culture? We don't know where we're starting from. That's really important here, that we don't know where we're starting from. 
So we're going to use this formula, the annual formula. I know it doesn't say annual on there, but that's the formula we're going to use. And I'm going to, I'm going to write it down. I know you can't see what I'm writing here. Um, I want to have it written down. So there's the formula right there. Uh, if I can get my camera back. And we've got uh, principal amount. We don't know. We don't know the initial amount. That's a problem. So I'm going to leave that blank. I'm hoping that I can get the camera back eventually. The rate was 85%. So 0.85. Time was two hours. And we know, or excuse me, we don't know the principal. So I'm going to put P. We don't know how much we're starting with. But we know that in the end, we had 12,500 bacteria. So after two hours, this is how many we got, but we don't know what we started with. Okay, this is where I'm going to pull up the calculator then. So if it says, what is the initial number? I think number six maybe says that too. What is the initial number? We have to work backwards through this process, through this formula. All right, so calculator. Here's the calculator. What I'm going to type in is I'm going to type just what's in the parentheses here with the two. Everything except for the P, because this is one giant number. So I'm going to put in the calculator one plus one plus. There we go. Uh, 0 0.85 to the power of, uh, I think it was two, two hours. Yep. So that gives me a decimal. That gives me 3.4225. We'll go with that. Sure. That's a rounded answer, but that doesn't really matter because we're going to have to round to the nearest bacteria anyways. Okay, so we type this in the calculator. We're solving for P. That's what we want to know. This is a, an equation we can solve pretty fast. Uh, this is times this decimal, 3.4225. So I'm going to divide by 3.4225, both sides. Okay, and that'll be it. That'll be my final answer. So I'm going to let you do that. I'm going to let you divide, get your final answer, try a few more of these. Um, and let me know if you have any more questions.